We're into the final straight for the mini spring back. Today we'll go from the bare boards to the finished product. We'll start by marking up the boards for the spine leather and corners. I'll do the usual of trying to show about a quarter of the width of the book at the spine with leather. So I'll work out what that is, and that's from the outside of the spine to the fore edge. I added a, a few millimetres for the overlap with the cloth. The cloth will go over the leather for two or three millimetres, so I added that. And I'll do the same measurement for the corners. I think it was 25 millimetres. Once we've got the spine leather and corners in place, we'll fill in uh, with some uh, heavy card stock. And once it's covered with cloth, the transition from the leather to the card stock will be hardly noticeable. So it'll give us an opportunity to make some corrections or adjustments later. So I'll use a strip of paper to measure the width of the spine piece and I'll also measure the height. I measured for 15 millimeter turn-ins and I changed my mind later and adjusted to 10 millimeter turn-ins. So instead of adding 30 I'd recommend adding 20. I'll do the same turn-ins for the corners, which I measured 15, did 15, it worked, but uh, in hindsight 10 would have been better. And from that I'll be able to cut out two pieces of leather, one for the spine and one which becomes the corners. So I'll make a, a little reverse template which I'll be able to use to pick the piece of leather that I want. I'm using kangaroo leather again. This leather is quite stiff compared to most of the kangaroo leather I get. I'll work out where I'm going to cut the leather out, but I'm not going to cut it out just yet. I'm going to thin the leather first. I'm going to thin the, all of the leather down to about 0.5 of a millimeter. So I just want to roughly know where the area is that I want to cut the pieces out from. I go a bit further outside and um, that's what I'll thin down. Measure the thickness, it's about uh, 0.9 and I want to get it down to about 0.5 of a millimeter. So I'm going to use a spoke shape to thin the leather. I'll work on a paring stone. You could use a marble pastry board or a piece of glass. And I'll just start using the, the spoke shape to uh, get the leather down to the thickness I want. This is the spoke shave that I modified in the video. So I lowered the bed angle and the um, bevel angle on the blade. I'll just work my way across the leather trying to take off the same amount all the way across. Notice how I use the spoke shave at a bit of an angle. I don't go straight at it. I, I turn it a bit and this lowers the effective blade angle even lower and provides a bit more of a cutting motion as well. So it just cuts a little bit better. And it turns out that this piece of leather has a change in grain direction across the area that I'm working. And it tends to, it was, it was digging in um, as I went across this change of grain direction. I don't know, it could have been the spine of the animal, but I thought I was away from the spine. It's just something about this piece of leather. Now I'll change directions to try and get the thickness at the rear edge of what was the rear edge to the same as what was the front edge a moment ago. If I leave high points, I can sometimes feel them with my fingers and the spoke shave finds them as well. Uh, sometimes it just won't be cutting and it's because it's riding on a, a slight ridge and then as you move across, it'll hit that ridge and take it off. What I found in one of my practice books was that I didn't want to take the leather too thin. If I go too thin, it's hard to work with and every single little bump shows through. So I've got it to where I want it. 
Now I'm just going to mark out my pieces of leather and then cut them out. I'm regularly asked how to pair leather. It's a difficult question to answer because there's just so many different methods and they're all right. It's the method that works for you is the best method. And so you just have to keep trying different approaches. Now I use this method of using a tip pairing with an English knife. I think it's the easiest method and that's probably why I learned it originally. And the trouble is once you pick up a method, it's hard to change. Now, before I go on to talk about that a bit more, I'll just talk about what I'm doing here. So I just put the uh, corner piece in place and then pushed it into the corner to get a mark from where the corner is. And then I cut off the tip and I cut it off at an angle. And that will just make pairing that a bit easier later. So as, as I was saying, there's different ways to do pairing. I'm doing tip pairing here. Uh, I've watched people doing heel pairing with the same knife and the results are so beautiful that I wish I could do it. I, I've, I practice it regularly but uh, I'm not good enough at it yet to swap. Uh, I am practicing with the French pairing knife a lot because uh, the results I see people get with that are really good as well. So at some point I, I may change the way I do my pairing but in a video uh, I just need a solid result and so I'll keep using it for now. The weakness of this method is that it's hard to get a real um, feathered edge that goes down to nothing. Uh, if I do have to do that, I have to change the blade angle so that it's much more parallel to the edge of the leather, but it's more likely to cut into the leather as well. So I'm going to start by putting the corner pieces in place. So I'll wet them on the outside and then paste them out. Just doing a bit of fine adjustment there. I'll paste them out twice and I'll leave them a few minutes uh, after the first uh, pasting. I'll cut the few minutes out in the video. I'll put two corners in place and then I'll turn those in. If the leather starts to dry out, it's a good idea to moisten it again. It just gives you longer to work with the leather and it keeps it soft. This leather was particularly stiff and it was quite hard to pleat the corners and my camera work on this wasn't particularly good. I think some of the other videos like the library binding show the pleating of the corners better. But the idea is that you turn the turn-ins in, they meet at a line, and then the bit of leather that sticks out past the corner, which hopefully is just a bit more than the thickness of the board, um, you make lots of little pleats in it, and as the leather gets used to the idea of where you want it to go, you can start to um, force it down and those pleats will hopefully uh, disappear and compress into the leather. Now some leathers this works better than others. This is about the worst leather for doing it because it's really smooth. So there's no grain for, to hide the pleats and it happens to be quite stiff leather as well. So uh, I generally find that goat leather is easier to do the corners with. I normally use a sharpish 
pointed bone folder to help form the pleats and for the life of me I couldn't find it that day so I ended up using my finger thumbnail as much as anything but there you can see me trying to form the pleats with the point of the bone folder. put a couple of moisture barriers in and put the book up so that it's not the leather's not sitting on the bench and let that dry overnight. The next step is to bruise the ends of the spring. We want the ends of the spring to be soft so that we can form the head caps. And at the moment after making the spring they they're rock solid. So we'll um, gently bruise the ends and then we'll moisten that with the sponge once the, a bit of moisture has got into the grey board then I'll try and uh, delaminate the grey board a little bit and force paste down into the ends of the spring and that way when it dries it'll dry nice and hard with a, a permanent shape to the head caps. Now we'll wet up the leather for the spine and then paste it and at that point we want to make sure that we've got everything together that we'll need uh, to apply the spine leather. And I guess the main things are whatever we're going to use to form the grooves on the outside, I'm going to use the sash cord but you could use rods for that and then at some point we need to form the head caps and you uh, you normally use a piece of cord to tie around the book to do that. Um, I can't actually find my favourite piece of cord, so I'm using the cord that I'd normally use on a large spring back, which is a bit too thick for this book, but uh, I'd forgot to um, find it earlier, and that's what I, all I can find at the moment, and I don't want to make a new one. I'll put PVA on the spine well EVA but PVA, EVA on the spine and in the um, groove where the lever is. I don't want to uh, glue the tabs in place so just be careful that you don't uh, overdo the PVA in the groove.
I'll take my time to line up the book to make sure that I've got it uh, centrally located. Though with all that um, paste, we've got a bit of time to reposition it if it's not exactly right. I'll put it down on the sides and then I'll use a bone folder to initially form the grooves. And once I'm happy with that, I'll put the cord in place and then put it in the press for a, a short period of time, maybe 10 minutes. For the larger spring backs, I normally have a slip knot in the piece of cord that I put into the grooves, um, but the knot ends up being way too large for this small book, so I just loop it around like that. And I had a couple of small pressing boards, but I've misplaced those too. So that's why I'm using my tins as pressing boards. You don't need the tins for that step. So I'm happy with that now. I'll just keep everything moist to give myself plenty of time to do the turn-ins. I'll refresh the paste on the turn-ins. And then I'll just work the leather down into the spine and over the corners of the boards. The leather takes a while to get used to where you want to make it go. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, gently persuading it that it wa it you want it to stay down in the spine. And after a while, it'll get used to the idea and give in and just stay there quite nicely. At first, it often feels like that it's never going to um, go into position. Um, but uh, leather is quite forgiving uh, most of the time. And eventually, it gives up and stays in position. Since the visitor's book, I've had a run of books where I end up with a little um, crease at the top of one of the joints. It must be something in my technique that I've managed to repeat it a few more times since then. And I end up doing it with this one as well, but it wasn't quite as noticeable. And I actually managed to work it out this time. And once you get tired of trying to reach perfection, it's time to do the head caps. So we'll put the loop of cord uh, over the uh, spine of the book in the groove. Pull it a little bit tight, just enough to pull in the leather at the head and tail. But you don't want to stretch the leather. So we'll start to form the head cap. So I'm going for that look that it's vertical on the outside and sloping in. So I'll use a, a piece of heavy uh, polyester film to wrap around the back to support the back. And then I'll start to shape this inward facing bevel. I was reading in John Mason's book about how springbacks were traditionally made and they used pieces of vellum to wrap around the spine while forming the head cap, I guess because they didn't have polyester film a hundred years ago.
Again, it's tempting to muck with this uh, until you reach perfection. I had one end that I just had a little bit of an asymmetry in and I just couldn't work it out. And eventually I gave up. And then I put the barrier sheets back in, uh, the cord back in place, and then I put it back in the press with a, a bit of light weight. I didn't put much pressure on it. I'm going to let it dry overnight. When opening a leather book that you've just put the leather around the spine on, it's a good idea to moisten the inside of the turn-ins. That little piece of leather that is vulnerable when it's being opened for the first time. It's not, hasn't uh, worked a bit of flexibility into it yet. And there is a slight danger that it will tear. So a bit of moisture will avoid that. You'll notice that the spine leather has come up about a millimeter short of the line on both sides. And I find this happens to me when I use a piece of paper to measure around the spine uh, instead of the actual material that I'm going to use. For smaller books it tends to not happen so I didn't worry about it. But for larger books I usually add two millimeters to the width of the measurement or I use the same material that I'm going to use to wrap around the spine and that normally ends up the right measurement. But I'm going to hide it anyway by filling it in and then overlapping two millimeters instead of three millimeters with the cloth. Now you'll also notice that the leather along the spine isn't straight. Now I could try and trim that up and peel it off the board uh, or you can do what I'm doing here is I'm just slightly adjusting the card stock. I'm just taking a, a, a little fine shaving off at each end uh, to match the shape of the leather. If you do decide to straighten the leather instead of adjusting the uh, filling card stock, uh, then you will end up with the leather being a bit thicker in those locations and you probably want to pair that a little bit to get an even thickness of uh, at the edge. But then you have the issue of cutting into the boards etc. So that's why I find it just easier to adjust the, the card stock. This manila card is about 0.3 of a millimeter thick which would be 12 point card in the US. I took the leather to about 0.5 of a millimeter. It was probably a little bit less and then I edge paired it but I didn't take it to a feather edge and that's why the 0.3 millimeter card matches the uh, edge of the leather. After a lot of mucking around, I finally got two pieces to fit and then I just glued those in position with EVA, PVA. Now I was aiming for a three millimeter overlap of the cloth and leather, but because I came up a bit short on the spine, it's not going to be three millimeters. So I'm going to go up and down and work out what the correct measurement is that uh, gives sufficient overlap, um, but covers as little of the spine leather as possible. And then I'll go around with the same measurement on the corners. 
A moment ago I realized that I was scratching up the leather on the bench top. So I grabbed a rag to put the book on to protect it. I should have done that from the moment I took it out of the press after the leather had dried. Now I'm going to work out the size of the pieces of cloth. Again, 15 millimeter turn ins. Now, 15 millimeters seems a lot for the turn ins for a little book. So, the very first time I tried um, making a small book, I made the turn ins really small. I think I went for 5 millimeters, and they were impossible to turn in. And I realized that not everything scales down when you make a small book. And it turns out that there's no reason not to keep the turn ins at 15 millimeters. So I put the cloth in position, I make a couple of pencil marks to help put it back into position and I break the cloth over the edges of the board and then I fold it back to the prick marks for the corners. Then I'll cut the corners off. I'll do both pieces of cloth and then I'll glue them out with mix. I use mix just so that I've got a bit of time to reposition the uh, cloth if I need to and I'm going to glue out the, all of the cloth and do the turn-ins right away. It's such a small piece of cloth and the turn-ins are so small it's a, a relatively quick job. And I'll move straight into uh, gluing down the paste downs. So you need to start by gluing the little tabs in position. And then it's just a matter of uh, gluing out with either mix or straight paste the paste downs and then closing the book. Now I want to give this a really firm press. I want to, those tabs to get pushed, pressed into place really well. So I'm going to put the tins in position on the inside. Then I'm going to use some grey board for press boards since I don't have any, I can't find my small press boards. And I'm going to leave it in the press about 10 minutes under really firm pressure. Not squeeze the ink out of it type pressure, but good pressure. 
after giving it a day to dry, you can start to play with your book and admire the work and make sure that it looks like a little mini spring back. You can jazz up your book with a few blind lines. Just use a sharp bone folder and your steel ruler. I think the cameraman was losing interest towards the end of this project. He did a shocking job here. So that's the end of the mini spring back. I hope you've enjoyed this video series and you've had some success making one yourself. If you've enjoyed the project, then please hit the big thumbs up button. I hope everyone's taking care. There's some terrible things happening around the world. So stay safe. And until next time, cheerio.